Life is really being that leader that inspires other followers to become leaders, not follow. This is Entrepreneurs The Playbook, where I give you access each week to the world's greatest athletes and executives about their personal and professional playbook and what has made them champions on and off the field. This is The Playbook. This is Dave Meltzer, CEO of Sports One Marketing with Entrepreneur The Playbook, and I just... The hairs on my arm are standing up because I've waited for this day. I'm going to tell a story, but I'm here with Hall of Famer Ray Lewis, uh, which is, for me, a norm. I'm not impressed by Hall of Famers anymore. You know, uh, our friend uh, Chad Steele, we were talking about people lose appreciation for San Diego, right? They, they live in San Diego, but when you come to Baltimore, you're like, oh, my God, San Diego. Right. I've lost appreciation for these Hall of Famers because they're all my friends, mm -hmm. but I will tell you, that I'm gonna tell a story, yeah. and this is why I had to meet with you. Warren Moon, my business partner, has the Crescent Moon Foundation. We give scholarships to kids uh, that give back to the community. Underprivileged kids who are enlightened enough to, hey, I may not have everything I want, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna give back and be of service. Mm -hmm. So Warren and I, for 27 years, have given scholarships, hundreds of them. And you have graciously, we have a bowling tournament in Las Vegas, attended that event, and. Every lane, 32 lanes in Las Vegas, have one celebrity, and people pay a lot of money to play with you, yeah. and they bowl, and it's very social. Yeah. Well, you were one of the few athletes that, one, paid for himself to come, you know, refuse that, and then my favorite thing that you did, this is the first time we ever met, you were bowling, and of course, so many of these fans were there, and they were coming up, but you were talking to a four-year-old little boy, mm -hmm. and you got on your knees, and... I, I know because I, when I was that age, had met my hero, yeah. and he had the hero eyes on, and but the other older guys were coming up and trying, and you stood up, right? This is prime time yeah, yeah, of yeah. your playing days, and you kind of chested up and said, "Hold on a second, I'm with the most important person here." I, I got choked up thinking about yeah. come back on your knees, and y your eyes were were kind of glossed over with a little bit of tears, like, and you meant it. It wasn't just a formality. You said, "This is the most important." I said. I literally ran over to Warren and I said, oh my God, I go, that monster on the field is the most gentle, kind person that's here. And I'm a huge Ray Lewis fan. And those are the things when people ask me, who, who are your favorite athletes? Those are the stories I tell. So yeah. as you know, when you do good deeds, yeah. they, they have the, the truth vibrates the fastest. They have the most power. So I don't want to talk too much about football because you've done everything, two Super Bowls and Pro Bowls, and you know I'm. Everybody knows that. What I want to get into is your philosophy, your playbook to success, yeah. and you know let's start with kindness mm -hmm. and, and what that means to you. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because uh, even going back to the kid, right? Even though we we are men now, uh, we still have kids in us, right? And it'll never change. And so one of the reasons why I do that with kids, more importantly than anything, because that's the one thing I always wanted to do as a kid. Like I never met a hero of mine, right? I, I never was in the, in the environment to meet someone of that influence that he's like, oh my gosh, I meet this person. And, uh, and so when kids, I mean, I'm just coming home the other day and these two little girls, oh my God, Gosh, I promised you I wanted to take them home with me, <laughs> right? And they ran up and they're like, you're my all-time favorite. I know everything about you and I do everything you tell me to do. And I'm sitting there saying to myself, like, these are babies that's dissecting this. So to give back, when you talk about kindness, man, I truly believe, you know, when God says love thy neighbors thyself, is that exactly the love that you're looking for is the love that you're supposed to display. Like, and that's when he said, when people see you, they see an image of me. Because if you're giving off that type of energy, like, people feel that. Like, like feel it. And, and, and so I love, like, I'm a toucher. So I got kids, and I touch them, right? Because they'll never forget it, right? And, and it's the same little girl. I'll never forget it either. <laughs> <laughs> and the same little girl, when I touched her, she was like, I'm never washing my arm ever again. But it's, the, it's, it's what they put in their head from the realm of kindness, right? If you come all the way back, right, kindness still goes back to love. It'll never stop. Yeah. It'll never stop. And so for me, the field was one thing, but the transition of who I've always been off the field is a credit to my mom, man. I tell you, uh, she, she showed love from a place that 
tough times, you know, I was I was shown that they don't last always. But tough people do, you know, and that's where that love and kindness from a loving mother. And so now, man, I, I do that. And so everything that I do um, business wise or everything that I'm doing going forward wise since I made the transition from football, it's 100 percent about how can I help people? How can I help them see that one bit of hope and just say, I got it. And when you got it, man, one of the most inspiring things, I truly tell you this, is the moment you see change. The moment you see the light come on in their eyes. And it's like, they got it. They got it. So, so yeah, man, kindness is, kindness is exactly what you want, what you would like to feel, which is why you should display it. And that's what I think if you think about our country now is that we've gotten away from it, right? Social media has pulled us away from that. There's no more personal interactions no more. There's no more walking up saying, hi, my name is Ray Lewis. Nice to meet you. Oh, let me take a selfie. Let me take a selfie. Yeah. Right? Nah. (laughs) Like spend some time with people and it'll blow, it'll blow your mind. And so me now, man, I tell you, I, I am so overwhelmed that I've never thought that life will be like this on this side of it, yeah. right? Um, you know, making plays on a football field was amazing. Changing lives is priceless. Yeah, so I wake up every morning mm-hmm. and I have a prayer. And so will God put 10 people in front of me that I can help? Yeah. Do you have a prayer when you wake up? Absolutely. Day? It had never changed. I had it since I was 14 years old. I'm old school, you know, so. One thing that I do is I meditate on our Father's prayer because he says that when you come to me, you must come to me in decent and in order. And that means you must open it up right when it says our Father. You know, so a lot of times personally when we pray, we get into a personal relationship with God, right? So we say, Lord, help me and help me do this, and help me do that, right? And that's great, right? But most of the times to be very open with God, you have to open that conversation up. Our Father. That's how he says you must honor him that way, right? Because then his, then his ears open. That's like my kids come to me saying, what's up? I ain't listening to that. Nice. Hey, what's going on? I ain't listening to that. Dad, can I speak to you? Absolutely. I can hear you now. Nice. Right? And so me in the morning, so I got a rule, right? I don't touch my phones in the morning. I don't touch nothing electronic. I fall on my face. I meditate. And I breathe through it. And as I'm getting through our Father's prayer, you have to think about how many times you can stop on our Father's prayer. Our Father, stop right there. Our Father, I mean I got a chance. I'm up, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that. so you, I, I go through these stages of breaking that prayer down. And and uh, I think one of the key things I do the most when you talk about a real foundation is whatever the the date is. Like today is May 9th, so my morning reading was Proverbs nine. Right, so I, pro- I follow a Proverbs based off the date, and then at the end of the night, I follow a Psalms based off the date, right? But what it does is, it puts you in a balance of gives you something to actually think about. You know, so today it was actually thinking about how powerful wisdom really is. Right. So one of the things that I find difficult, because you and I share a lot of beliefs, is I want to make these messages mm-hmm. mainstream. Yeah. Right, so... Uh, you know, I wrote a book called Connected to Goodness. Right. Right. You and I both know what goodness is. Right. But everyone else has some preconceived notions. A lot of times people have preconceived notions about, like I did, of you. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and I find that as my brand has grown, I spent years building people's brand, Troy Aikman, Stevie Young, yeah. you know, all these big brands. Right. But now that was mine, you know, a, a lot of people don't know who I am. Right. There's a lot of haters out there. Everywhere. The rest right? of your life. Exactly. <laughs> and, and so how do you... You know, stick to your message and make it mass so you can inspire as many people as you can. Yeah. Uh, and then also, you know, where's that need to be offended? You know, because I know if I, I grew up, same, six kids, single mom. Yeah. My mom is my hero. Yeah. yeah I'm a mama's boy. Absolutely. And, and that's what inspired me. But yeah. h- how do you communicate that? Because I know like even in the media, sometimes people are like, oh, Ray's preaching. Yeah. Well, I love it. Right. 
it yeah, never stops. I wish you're back on ESPN because that's what they need on there is not someone. I love the new show, Get Up, Get It Up, because he's on there every time. And I won't use names, but every time they say something nice or inspiring, well, that's what makes us different. In the media, they're always focusing on the negative, but this is what makes ESPN different. We're now focusing on this great thing. True leadership. True leadership is when a leader takes other followers and makes them leaders. Inspire others. That's true leadership. So when your message has to stay, has to stay consistent, I have a duty. The first thing we must know is our why. Why? Because I am a child of a God. I'm God. Period. Stop right there. My how and my what? All the tangible things that gets me to those places. But when you talk about why the message has to be consistent, because the right people connecting to the right message, right timing. And that's where a lot of kids, definitely in today's time, their instant gratification comes from so social media, comes from Instagram, comes from all of these different things. But me and you're old enough, none of that didn't exist. Right. So who did we have to lean on? It was a foundation. And so that foundation is what I believe why kids struggle so much these days, not just kids, because the foundation of what I've always understood is what I've always exercised my whole life since I was a junior deacon in the church since 10. Right. So when somebody said, oh, raise preaching. Absolutely. Because if I can give it to you, if somebody can hear this, then darn it, it's for you. Right. You ever went to church sometimes. Right. And you ain't been in a while. And then you go back. And as soon as you get in there, the first paragraph sounds like the pastor is talking directly to you. And you're like, what? I cannot believe he's talking about me. Do he know my business? Yeah. But all it is, is just confirming the disconnect. Yeah. And he's right. talking through. Absolutely. Right. Through. Absolutely. Man, look, we, we have we have a real duty. And I'm telling you this, like this is where I, why I'm so inspired to change one life a day. Maybe I change more, but one life a day. Why? Kid called me last night. Papa, I'm really frustrated going through this. I sent him this information. He has uh, he has cancer with some stuff, dealing with some stuff. And I sent him a lot of stuff to kind of go over. Sent him some Miles Monroe stuff. Just went through some stuff. Just sent him some stuff. He came back. He was like, I never knew that, that I had the choice to live. I said, absolutely you have the choice. But watch what happens. And I'm going to use the analogy of animals, right? Why is a lion the king of the jungle? He's not the biggest. He's not the strongest. He's not the fastest. The only thing that sets a lion different than an elephant is his mentality. That's it. I, when he walks up, he must be respected. Period. An elephant weighs 50 times more than this lion. So why wouldn't the elephant look at the lion and say, mentality. If an eagle flies at a certain altitude, if he bumps into another bird up there, it must be another eagle. Because pigeons don't fly that altitude. They can. They can, but they don't. And so that's where we have to really understand what life really is. Life is really being that leader that inspires other followers to become leaders, not follow. Yeah. Now, one of the big lessons I want you to teach yeah. and, and preach, because I like, like it, you know, and, and I've dealt with people telling me I can't do things, right? When you grow up with nothing, you know, and, and there's haters out there, like you say, and there's more when, because of social media, you hear it and see it. And, and I always have my approach. Anyone that says something negative, I say, I appreciate your perspective. Here's my cell phone number. <laughs> Please call me because I'd like to, to understand where you're coming from. Right. And I'm trying to connect. Yeah. Now, 99% of the people never call me. Yeah. And the 1% do call apologizing uh, for what they do. But how do you, you know, teach or motivate people? Because I think the thing that holds the pigeon down is what other people think of the pigeon. Yeah. Right? This, it's other people's opinion. The how only reason, it? the only reason eagles fly alone, this is why eagles don't flock. They don't want other people oh, limiting them. Simple math. <laughs> See, that's a genius. Just, <laughs> I got to just. He, he, but, 
but it's 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 why you rarely see an eagle with other eagles. Nah, they don't want to be affected by the perspective. By other people's perspective. Yeah. We're in a world now where babies are listening to people that's on cyberspace that you'll never meet in your life, that they don't know what's going on in their lives, but they're going to tell you about your life. The greatest ability, I'm, this is one of my greatest teachings that I love to share. If you let somebody dictate who you are, imagine dying and realize that you actually lived a half lived life. If that, right? Can you imagine no. going to the next place and your only test was to believe in yourself? <laughs> yeah. Simple. And the power that you already have. The power that you already have. Yeah. See, that, it, it's, it's one of the things that I, I think if we ever go backwards on the way that we actually taught our kids, right? The way that me and you were raised taught us that when I get to this point, helping people is more important than making money. But what does it create, right? Because there's only two ways that you can deal with people on this earth. You can either manipulate them or you can inspire them, right? So either you're trying to get something from them or you're trying to give something to them. And what, what is giving to you mm. when you expect something to get back? Mm. What, what is that? Is that giving? Giving. If you're looking for anything back, then forget the giving part. You don't miss that blessing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, you know, Bob Proctor taught me giving with the expectation of receiving or getting is just trading. It, you're a trader. You're not, you're not at service. Yeah. Proverbs speak about that very strongly. Um, yeah. It's not a good thing yeah. to give. It's not even a good thing to give somebody a loan and then put interest on top of it. <laughs> right. Right. I, I, that's see, a, I've read. See, I'm going to help you, but right. I'm going to put interest on Because manipulation. Yeah, absolutely. That's manipulation. It's, manipulation. it's man, for self-interest. Man, I, I'm, I tell you this, and this is. And that's sad because our economy is based on a service economy. When you take some of the leading companies, yeah. all they're doing is making interest. Absolutely. And it's so detrimental and negative to our society as a whole. You, listen to the world yeah. we live in. We live in the world now that says, we, the two words kids hear knowledge. You are, you are, you are. You know where you are comes from? That's somebody else. We never live in the, in the space of I am. I am, exactly. I am. How long I have am. you lived in I am? Oh, man, I, I, this, is what's, uh, this is what's special about the I am world. I was living in the I am when I was young. I just didn't know it. Me too. I get that. But I was different enough to tell my friends and my family that I see things differently. And true, true, true leaders think totally out of the box. See, when you talk about critics, I'm too busy. Yeah. I ain't got time for my critics. Looking forward, man. That's the <laughs> listen, the, listen, the, the, one of the greatest successes to ever prove your critics wrong become successful. Oh, yeah. Keep and be going. happy. And be happy. My, 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 my kids, my sons, I speak to countless guys and kids every day, girls every day. And the one thing that has lost, that has been lost, is we are confused with our brand and our identity. The identity is who you are from the core. Your frequency. Your frequency. And that's what's disturbed. Because now they think the brand is who they are. Right, the you are. So that's why every day they have to get up and post. Right, and they're worried about you. Yeah, are. They, they worry about, who? How many, how many likes did I get? Yeah. How many of this did I get? Which leads to the need, the need to be right, the need to be offended, the need to be separate, superior, inferior, all coming from you are. All coming from you are. And that's all ego. You are. Almost. You can either be a host to God or can you can, or you can be a hostage to your ego. Yeah. Let's talk about mistakes because yeah. you know, I'm, I'm what I call a person who illuminates my mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. I, I've evolved. Uh, you know, I made a lot of money when I was young yeah. and, I, and I lost it all. And I'll tell you why I lost my money because I lost I am. Mm -hmm. And I worried about all the things. I, I surrounded myself with the wrong people, yeah. the wrong ideas. Yeah. I separated from who I was and I made Ooh, mistakes. We agree. Right. And how do you communicate 
you know, be, because people, you know, I, I find more people love me because they come, when I come off stage from speaking, they say, I just, I appreciate your courage. I can't believe your, your honesty. Your, yeah. And I said, no, I was just speaking the truth. You know, I, I'm okay with, I know your truth. You may not stand on stage and tell people <laughs> that you were a mess at one point right. in your life and you made this mistake, right. and you, but I did. And I do because I want you to feel comfortable mm -hmm. knowing that there's forgiveness in the world. I share all of my mistakes for one reason, so that you don't make the same ones I made. That's my kids' only rule. My kids will tell you, daddy is the coolest daddy ever, but you can't make the same mistakes he made. Not if you got the blueprint. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not yeah. when I'm an open book. I call that the dummy tax. Absolutely. Let me pay the dummy like, tax. You don't got to pay it. <laughs> like if, I'm, if I done been through all that, then don't you follow that path. Yeah. And so. And, and if they do, mm -hmm. then it's, there's two things to learn. What did I do? Yeah. I do yeah. to attract it to myself. Yeah. And what am I supposed to learn from it? Yeah. And then forgive, forgive yourself. yourself. Only, Only one person, person ever to forgive, in my opinion. opinion. Me. You ever found yourself in some situation and somebody say, you are in trouble. We back to you are. Yeah. See, we don't we don't live in I am. Because when you become I am, I am king. Right. I am leader. I am in favor. I am in favor. I'm in promise. I'm I, I have mercy, I have grace, but most importantly, I walk by faith and not by sight. What does that mean? That means that certain people around me, sooner or later, I'm gonna have to be old enough to say, me and you don't agree. Yeah. Love you. But I just think it's time for us to separate. One of the hardest things we do with people, and now on social media, is we stay connected to people that we know ain't, ain't taking this ride with us. Right. Right. And so when you talk about, when we're talking about the transformation, so let's give a couple of simple principles, right, so kids can really understand this, right? If you don't know your why, you're in trouble. If you can't figure out your how, then this world will eat you alive. And if you don't know your what, people will tell you what. What you are. Oh, that's, th those, are, those are the things. And then if you found yourself, every leader was a follower first. So if you found yourself a follower, then you have to ask yourself, why are you still following and not leading? Why? It's because most of us are hanging with pigeons. <laughs> not eagles. Not eagles. Right. Man, when you, when you hang with eagles, your thought process change. Right? When you're playing the game of football, you're this great guy, and you're doing this, you're doing that. And then when you leave the game, you say, how do I do this? How do I do that? You know what you do? Go find eagles. Right. Go get around the people that's doing the things that and you want to be inspired to do. <laughs> you nailed it. And that's the way you start to change the whole trajectory of what comes your way and why, why good karma comes this way. I, t I, tell my, I tell people all the time, every time I speak, Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. <laughs> That's my line, man. Be kind to your future self, show me your friends, and I'll show you. You listen in, girls, I tell my daughters, they hate me for it. They're surrounded, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Yeah. That, yeah. The, exactly. That's why three mentors at minimum all time, no matter what age you are. No I'm matter what age what, you are. What, when I wanted to do my TV show, mm -hmm. I went to the producer of Undercover Boss because I liked that show. Right. And I said, hey, I want to do this show to help support entrepreneurs. I want to build the future of America business-wise with the principle of providing value first. I, call, I wrote a book called Compassionate Capitalism, yep. right? How to be a compassionate capitalist. I believe in making money yeah. to help people. Yeah. That's how we help people. Yeah. And this guy taught, all of a sudden, you know, the show blew up. It was tremendous. When I did the podcast, when I wrote my book, I went to Napoleon Hill Foundation, mm -hmm. Think and Grow Rich. Yep. Same thing. You know, it's, it's radical humility. You, you're such a presence, right? You are an I am person. Yeah. And I can say that, but you're humble. Mm -hmm. Since the day I met you. Let me tell you why. So I started a company with a friend, Power 52, right? It's a clean energy company, solar company. We do solar insulation. We do LED lights. We do battery storage. A lot of things we do to lower your bills and bring more money back into your pocket. But I wouldn't have joined this partnership if the training piece wouldn't have been incorporated. So we have a 12 to 6 week, 12 to 16 week program to where we teach you everything you need to know about solar. Off grid, on grid, behind the meter, in front of the meter, 
all these little nicks. Watch what happens. Most of them got two or three strikes. I worked with one of the judges downtown, um, Judge Pistoria, who's really, she has a, a program that's incredible where she takes these people that's been thrown away, basically. It's the best way to say it. Got marks on their records, and we empower them now. We bring them jobs. We give them jobs. But guess what we do? After we train them 12 to 16 weeks, we bring them out of the training, and instead of saying, go fish, go find a job, we put them right back into the jobs of Power 52. So we just graduated right at about 51 graduates, wow. right, um, two nights ago, a couple of nights ago at our event. And one of the fathers walked over to me, and he said, my son was shot five times last year. And the only thing saved his life is this program. So money will come and go, but changing a life will follow your destiny and your legacy forever. Man, that's why we live. Yeah, that's that why I live in the I am, right? Because I am the new leader. Yeah, I don't look for it, right? See, that, that's the thing. I don't have to go. Nobody has to tell me that. I'm not going on social media saying, oh, I need to prove myself today that I'm a leader. No. Before I touch my phone, I confirm that when my feet hit the ground, I must be moving. And so, man, that's, that's kind of, you know, some things that this different world that I'm in um, now of what true leadership is, right? So I developed leadership from a, a team playing sports for so many years, but what transitioned from that is when I came to business, right? And so then when I got into business, I started to see, being brutally honest, I started to see the disconnect from helping people. I started to see the true disconnect in business from God. Me too. And I'm like, wait a minute. So if we can't take money home, if we can't take none of these businesses, none of these cars, none of these houses with us, why, why do we live? And see, I think it's more leaders at the top of the food chain that got to be willing to stay in the presence of I am and not the presence of you are. Oh, you are my favorite. You are my all-time greatest. But what you're teaching me, I want you to listen to some of the music. So listen to the kids when they say, oh, they my, you are my favorite. You're my favorite what? Entertainer? Because when they relate to you, they change their language. And that language goes from saying, you are my favorite to, you inspired me. Yeah. And I am this. I am yeah. this because of you. You see, and so, the legacy and the following of people, I truly believe that the day that we actually enter heaven, that I truly believe that we will really be counted just or good based off how many people's lives that you actually changed. Yeah. I truly believe that. I truly believe that. And that's why I think, that's why I love the business world right now. Because I, I start off with God, and I end with God. And I'm not standing here without him. Now, a bunch of people don't believe in the Bible. But the Bible's been good to me. Yep. So, so whatever you don't believe in, that's up to you. But the Bible's been good to me. And the principles that I've learned from the Bible, I'm 42. And my birthday is coming up May 15. I'll be 43. At 14 years old, I watched the same sunset that I'm about to watch driving in New York right now. Mm -hmm. And I started reciting our father's prayer at 14. And I told my best friend, we were sitting on the corner up on the oak tree and we was both starving. And we didn't have, not, we didn't have a dollar in our pockets. And I looked at him and I said, I'm gonna make it out of here. I am gonna make it out, gonna of, make it out of here. And I'm taking my family with me. Nice. A vision, a vision. Then I came back and said, I will be the person to change many lives. They was like, what, <laughs> right. what is that? 
where this man talking coming from at 14? But I had a vision. I had a real vision. And it was not predicated on what people thought about me. Well, I'm going to end this yeah. on this note. I, I took too much of your time, but <laughs> no. I'm blown away. This is more than I even anticipated, yeah. and I am so grateful. Yeah, man. Uh, I appreciate you. I look forward to doing more things with you. Absolutely. Because I am alive. Whatever I can do to be of service for you, yeah. your businesses. I know entrepreneurs as well. We, you do so much with children and women, young men and women. I, this just enlightened me even more. I am David Meltzer with Entrepreneur, the playbook This Is, Ray Lewis, and he inspired me, and I know he's going to inspire you.